let's dive right in. One of the things that you often encounter is wanting a white background for your figures, something that is going to allow you to capture all the nice shadows and reflections while still being able to put this cleanly into a PowerPoint or into a figure. This is a more or less forgiving approach depending on the circumstance that you need to work with, but let's dive into the options. The first one is don't have the shadows and everything will be much, much easier. For starters, all you'd have to do is take whatever shadow ground plane you have, hide it from view and remove it from the render. Obviously this has gotten much darker right away and I don't think it looks as good. Under render settings, what you're going to want to do is come to film and transparent, and we're going to conquer the bad lighting issue by using an HDRI. So simply open a new window, change to the shader editor, and at the top, switch from object to world. You can see here we have these very simple nodes for world output and background. I'm going to make sure I have node wrangler enabled by coming to edit preferences, add-ons and searching for node wrangler. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead, hit control T with this node selected, and this is going to bring up a number of options. Now, the thing that you're doing here is you're setting up an HDRI or a high dynamic range image that includes all the lighting you want. So I have a folder of pre-downloaded HDRIs. You can find many of these for free on HDRI Haven and very simply choose kind of the one that you think is going to work well. I'm going to use the noon grass as an example. Now this is done two things. One is you can see that the lighting is much better. So we'll remove the air HDRI and it's very dark and we'll add it back in. And now you can see that we do have much more light and you're going to get different effects with different HDRIs. For example, here's the learner park HDRI and it's updated. But the two things that you're going to notice is we're getting reflections from the HDRI environment. We can kind of conquer this with transparent glass. In fact, that's much, much better. But the other thing is we're not able to conquer the color. And the way that we're going to do that very simply is drag a box over all of these nodes here, move them to the side, hit shift A, and then we're going to come to color, hue saturation, and we're going to plug this in right between these. Then we'll just drag the saturation value down to zero, and we now have something that's quite clear. And so here's your before and after, before, very dark, after, much better. And this is something that you could easily do. Render this, it'll be much faster and take this image, stick it on top of a PowerPoint. It will be perfectly white. Also, because the background is transparent, you can layer whatever you want. Let's say, however, that you do want shadows. In fact, rather, we're gonna step back for one second and say, if you find this too bright because of your specific HDRI, one of the things that you can do is actually just change the strength. So if I drop this down to 0.5, it'll be a little bit darker. If I bring it all the way down to 0.1, you can see much darker still. And I could obviously bring the value up higher as well if I wanted it to be brighter. So this is a pretty decent approach. Let's say you really want the shadows. In this case, it's not going to be a perfect approach, but we're going to take some steps to make some improvements. I'm going to start by decoupling the HDRI. So we just have the generic background. We'll bring our ground plane back and we have our default light enabled. Now, obviously you're going to have to render this whole thing. So that is going to take longer, but there are aspects of this that look pretty good. If we wanted to manipulate this a little bit further to make it better, the way that we're gonna really have to do that to get rid of the gray is to start with our background plane. So I'm going to hide this window and you can see this is our generic scene setup. We're going to grab this ground plane, come to the materials properties, and we're going to add a material. Now, a trick that you may have seen before is that if you change this principled BSDF to an emission shader and then come to the camera view, it's pure white, but Likely not. It's probably not perfectly white. And if you crank this emission value higher to get it, you see we're already losing details there through the glass. This is a somewhat unique problem for glass. It won't really happen as much for other materials, but it is something you're going to see. Now, the trick to avoid this is change back to a principled BSDF, and we're going to change some settings. So we'll start by bringing the roughness all the way up to one. We're going to keep specular where it is, and we'll actually change the base color so it is pure white. Then we're going to come down to the emission value and we're going to drag the emission up, not perfectly to pure white, which is essentially the emission shader, but close. So maybe just about there. And now what you're going to see is that we actually do have some of that shadow preserved, not all of it. It's much more subtle, but we're not going to blow out the image in the same way. And the final trick, and this is what's going to actually make the biggest difference is to come to the render properties. And under color management at the bottom, we're going to change from filmic in the view transform to standard. 
and you can see how much whiter that is immediately. This is noticeably more white. So filmic, quite gray. And if you rendered this and put it on a PowerPoint slide, it would be much more obvious. Standard, far whiter. And we can actually now go and back and revisit the material. So let's go back to the ground plane material and we can come down. We could either change the emission strength or the emission value. So let's just change the emission value here. And now again, be careful, this is going to be more gray than you anticipate, but we do have our shadow, we have the lighting that we want, and this is a quick and easy-ish way to get this to work. Realistically, if I had to, I would do this only for figures. This gray is going to show up on a PowerPoint slide. It really just kind of is. There isn't too much of a way about that, and I do think it's blowing out the image here. So if we hide the ground plane again, and then reopen our HDRI, so we'll come back to the shader editor, go to world, and then we'll just connect in the HDRI socket that we prepared before. You can see this is actually pretty good, and I think that's probably a better approach. So render this on a transparent background, place that in your scene as you need. Where you really may have to rely on the ground plane approach is if you're going to be using multiple objects interacting in the scene, and how they cast their shadows and reflect on each other is going to be important. In that case, try and use the standard transform. You can also change the look to explore options like very low contrast or medium low contrast, and that will help bring out the white or the contrast of the object that you're trying to image. This is mostly a problem for glass, but because a lot of renders often use glass for chemistry or generally science, it is something that I've encountered before. So this is a bit longer than I intended, but hopefully these are some useful tips. If you want to make use of this asset specifically, the beakers, as well as Erlenmeyer's and graduated cylinders, you can find those for free on Gumroad. And that's about it for this one. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues. And until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.